Hi everyone, it's Joseph, and thank you so much for watching this documentary. This will be one for the record books because we have a beautiful duo here today. And also, before I introduce the duo, I would like to say thank you for um, coming into the Iconics Library. For sure, go ahead and um, share this with all of your friends in the industry and not because some of these uh, documentaries are just point blank interesting to listen to. Uh, always remember, you always want to have at least a piece of paper and a pen in case someone mentions something or a book or a quote or something that you actually want you know, to write down to remember. Today, I have with me Cassie from Denver. Hello, Cassie. Hello, Joseph. And Julia from the jungle. And, you know, we may think that Jungle Girls <laughs> look a little different than they normally do, but look at the Jungle Girl in Lima, Peru, is beautiful, and she's got um, monkeys right now doing a <laughs> pedicure that we're not going to see. So, with that being said, I... Thank you. I will, Hi. I, will, um, I want you guys to get ready for your questions, of course, because we're going to be interviewing um, Chris Sorby and Andy Reese. Now, Chris Sorby, I don't need to share with you, is an international and world-known colorist through independently her own uh, gift and also for many years worked for Redkin on stages all over. And because of Chris Sorby, you hold your color brush differently. <laughs> Let's go with it. <laughs> then we have Mr. Reese who is a renowned producer, director, photographer, painter. Um, he professionally knows how to remove the cork from a prosciutto bottle. Is it prosciutto? That's meat. Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he knows how to like <laughs> pop that open. Anyway, I am looking forward today, girls, to introducing and now, or interviewing these two beautiful people that uh, I think we all want to know a little bit about, you know, some things they both have offered and how they, how they met. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to one of my colleagues, Cassie or Julia, <laughs> which everyone would love to go first. You know, I think I want to jump right in because I'm truly, again, this interview is like, I didn't do any research on you, Andy, none. I only know you from this right here, okay? Um, and I've known Chris for, I don't know, since I was two. So 20 <laughs> years, we're in your 20s, right? Um, but how did you two meet? That's what is my biggest question. <laughs> Who's gonna answer that one? <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll answer part of it and then I'll leave it to my gorgeous husband, Andy, to answer the other part of it. So, um, cut a long story short, I went onto a dating app called Bumble. <laughs> and um, this was under a lot of uh, duress, actually, because I was totally against it. But my lovely friend, Gida Pellerito, she, say, she grabbed the phone. We were out at dinner one night. She grabbed the phone. She said, I'm going to take your picture, do your profile. You're going on it. You need to start getting out and about. And um, so I happened to be in New York one weekend, which was a, an interesting uh, situation, actually, because when I was with Redkin, I was on the road almost every weekend, which I loved. But it was a rare occasion, and obviously one that was meant to be, that I was in New York. So I was having coffee in my little garden, and um, I thought, oh, let's see who's on Bumble. Because I have to say, you know, if there's any guys out there watching this, just, you know, just be careful how you take your pictures. Like from under your chin in a public bathroom really doesn't cut it. So just, you know, <laughs> Try to <laughs> try to get a better angle if you're going to put your picture on. So I get on Bumble, and uh, lo and behold, this hot guy is on my screen. So I was like, "Oh, hi, Andy! How lovely to meet you!" And Andy Reese is a filmmaker, 
So there you go, Cassie. You don't have to do your research. And what were you doing in New York? So on the one or very rare occasion that uh, Chris was at home in New York, I happened to be in New York from London uh, attending uh, the Queen's World Film Festival because uh, I had two independent documentaries uh, in the festival. And this was in March 2018. And Independent um, is, is equivalent of low budget, and I'd made two very low budget, interesting as they were, but two very low budget uh, films. So I could only afford for me and my production assistant um, to fly over for a long weekend to attend the screening and the festival. And we arrived on the Friday and we had our screenings of both films on the Saturday and on the Sunday morning, we were meant to have a sort of meet and greet, sort of power breakfast with people, but we had had a little bit of a party with our festival friends on the Saturday evening. So in our very independent, low rent hotel room in, <laughs> in Queens, there was Ollie snoring like a trooper. And I was, I was in the twin bed nearest to the window and the window did have the most amazing view of the Brooklyn Bridge in Manhattan. <laughs> so what else am I gonna do? I'm lying in bed, nothing to do, Ollie's sound asleep. I get on Bumble. <laughs> Just to see, see who's out there. And of course, as Chris explained, up pops Chris. Now the great thing about Bumble is girls go first. So I got this text from Chris how lovely to meet you. And we corresponded. And whilst she knew that I was English, she wasn't aware that I was only in New York for the weekend. So I explained, <laughs> I, I explained to her that, um, and I didn't know she was from London, actually. So I, uh, I was pretty vague about where I was from. And um, I said, Look, I do apologize, but I'm not going to be uh, here much before um, uh, after Monday, but it'd be lovely if you have the time to meet up for a cup of coffee or a glass of wine on Monday lunchtime prior to heading off to the airport. And she'll deny this, but she, <laughs> but she kind of responded by text as if to say, do you know who I am? I don't have time <laughs> of a Monday lunchtime to sit having a glass of wine with a random man. <laughs> As much as I wanted to. Right. <laughs> to, which, to which I said, okay, headed back, tail between my legs, back to London, thinking <laughs> nothing of it. And then fast forward to the Friday, five days later, Chris called me and we were on the phone for about three hours. Three and a half. Three and a half. And then when she was in New York or when she wasn't working, we were having you know up to four or five hour conversations i wasn't going she wasn't getting back home from work until seven o'clock in the evening new york time eastern standard which is midnight london time i wasn't going to bed until five every morning <laughs> oh my god we then we then that's beautiful <laughs> we then so met two months Two months, yeah. two months later, we met in London. In person. In person. And I saw this goddess <laughs> glide across this marble hotel floor. I, I really had spent a long time getting ready that day, I have to say. And then by October the 31st of that year, we were married. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. I know. I know. Crazy. There so we're, we're just about to celebrate our two-year wedding anniversary. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> so I, I got to jump in, Julia. So being a film producer and knowing all the tricks, so in order to get her to glide across the floor, did you do like a plastic <laughs> sheet? Like did you have a long plastic sheet? And then did, you, did Ollie... Kind of <laughs> well, here's the great thing, actually. No, o o o o Ollie didn't pull her. Thankfully, I managed to pull her. But, <laughs> but the great thing, as you know, Joseph, as, a, as every artist knows, it's all in your head. So yeah. it's all in your imagination. So in my imagination, right. and of course, it, she glided in slow-mo at 300 frames <laughs> per second, and the music was by Vangelis, and the whole thing was just beautiful. <laughs> 
So there Andy was making a film. All oh, in wow. And it, was, it was amazing. And it, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. So I've got a lot to be grateful for to Jida. Um, and and now I have that's an a amazing absolute, husband. That's a beautiful son. story. And I want to know, um, we have s several people in the room that want to ask Chris a question, but I want to just end it by saying, have you ever documented what you just said, ever? No, but I have a little treatment for a, um, a drama screenplay. Oh, okay. Nice. A, 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 a romantic comedy, if you will, of that. Yes, I have. I have. <laughs> I haven't okay. began writing the script because yeah, I because I because I, I, I edit iconics all week. But, um, <laughs> That's right. That. But it's it's there. It's it's in one of the many files of you know scripts to write. <laughs> and who's going to play us then? Well, that's a question. Oh. Yeah, that's going to have to be a question. I think you <laughs> yourselves. I think it just should be straight up, like reenact everything. Relive. <laughs> Oh, we, we would do that in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. Julia, what do you got for us? Julia in the jungle? Mm -hmm. I am here reporting from the jungle. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is such an amazing story. That is just meant to be. So I would like to know, since both of you are somewhat artists, you know, because all the cinema and filming and everything is very artistic, and then with all your art that you do and everything is... When you have downtime to talk, and you've mentioned before that you don't have a whole lot of time sometimes, but what do you enjoy talking about? From a hair artist, a filmmaker, what do you guys enjoy talking about? Oh. <laughs> you go first. We, <laughs> we, well, we, we in, the, in the last four months, we have been so lucky because we have a beautiful home and we've had very, very little to be concerned about. And we have spent an inordinate amount of time together. In fact, we, we have been inseparable pretty much since we since met. The, since the day I was being dragged across the marble floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I think we've, we've been virtually together almost every day since. And, we, and because, we, because we, we've both had quite interesting lives, Chris is, uh, has been a lot more interesting than mine, but we, 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 have, we have a, we, we, we never stop talking. No, we? no, but in answer to your question, Julia, we talk a lot about um, the documentaries that Andy's going to make. Mm. We, uh, we just had a very interesting case just uh, at the weekend of another, um, Andy did a film called Endgame, which is about um, assisted death. And I actually went with him for the last part of the shoot so I was present at this young man's death um, in Switzerland. And now we've had a, a girl approach us with a, a, a horrendous story. So we talk I, about I things hope, like I that. Hope. But also um, Andy listens a lot to what my life was, you know, doing hair and, and, um, and you know, he worries that I miss it. And I worry that I miss it too. But, uh, but, you know, we're here in Oxford in the UK because we have a son who's about to turn nine. So, you know, you've got to do what's right for your family when the time is right. The, and, you know, yes, isn't it lovely to go and spread your wings and schlop around around the world and, and just have fun making documentaries or doing hair shows. But life isn't always like that. And parenting is something that we both take extremely seriously. So that's why we're based in Oxford. There's nothing that serious about parenting. <laughs> no, exactly. Are you, guys, are, you guys ready for some, are you guys ready for a random question from, who wants to go first? Manny. Manny, let's bring you up. Um, you can turn your sound and your video off. Come on the screen and join us. Make history with us, please. And go ahead and talk to Chris or Andy. Ask them what you may want to, um, if you have any questions. Hi guys, my name is Manny. Um, I don't know if you guys can see me because it looks like I can't get on. Oh, okay. I just uh, try to convert you. There you are. 
Hello, Hi. Say, Hi. Your <laughs> name, where, say your name, where you're from, and then um, go ahead and ask the question. Okay, so my name is Manny Zhang, and I am from Appleton, Wisconsin. And I go to school at the Salon Professionals Academy in Appleton. And then, um, so what I'm wondering, I have a few questions here, but one of the main ones that I wanted to ask was, um, like, when did you know that uh, cosmetology was going to be something that you wanted to do for the rest of your life? Well, Manny, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> and, uh, the, the answer is um, about three hours ago. <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay, Manny, I'll take that one over. Um, so I discovered when I was seven years old that I had to be a hairdresser, no question. Um, so I begged my mum, and that was because I was in a salon with my mum. She was having a perm, if you know what that is. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was absolutely fascinated and hooked, begged her to let me leave school when I was seven. Of course, that wasn't going to happen. But, uh, but yeah, I knew from seven and uh, now almost, um, it'll be 60 years on Halloween that um, was, because uh, I'll be 67 wow. on Halloween. So for 60 years, I've wanted to be a hairdresser and I'm still trying. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that is oh a great God. question, Manny. Mm -hmm. Thank Very you. great question. Let's bring in PV. Can she, um, yeah, I believe. She Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi. And I go to uh, the South Russell Academy in Appleton, Wisconsin. And Chris, honestly, uh, I have to say it is an honor to actually be talking to you through a Zoom call. But oh. uh, so my, my biggest, or my question is, um, what was the biggest challenge in your like career? Oh. Uh, it's an honor to meet you, PV. Hi. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, what was the... Oh, I, I know very well what that was. So uh, when I was um, 46, I was living in the UK and um, I got a phone call from the then general manager of Redkin Worldwide. And uh, he called me to say, will you come and live in New York? Will you be our global artistic director? And I was so shocked that I was like, who is this? Come on. And he said, this is the general manager <laughs> worldwide of Redkin. Um, so, I mean, initially I was so excited I couldn't speak. Then I was so nervous I couldn't speak. Then I was everything in between. And I went on a kind of roller coaster ride for the next six months while I made up my mind of whether... I was capable of doing this or would I be fired within a year because they'd find out that I was no good at what I did. So it was, um, it was quite a ride that first year, but hey, you know what? They kept me there until I resigned um, just over a year ago. So I was with them almost 20 years. Wow. So they never did find out that I wasn't good at what I did. <laughs> <laughs> you're amazing and because you guys have such a great class let's bring in grace you guys can stay on just close your uh yep uh grace you there can you turn on your video there you are grace and your sound Um, I'm Grace Crowns. I go to school at the Salon Professional Academy Appleton Grace, as well. I'm Grace. originally from Wisconsin Rapids, but Grace. I chose to come to school Grace. here because it's a great program and all the educators. But um, I have a question for both of you guys. Um, how, in the beginning of your career and just throughout your career in general, how did you guys like make connections in network? in like the bigger hair world and in the film world as well. Um, thank you for your question, Grace. And just before um, either of us answer, I'm gonna ask if you wouldn't mind lifting up your device so we can see your face. Because, oh, look how beautiful she is. Yeah. Now we're seeing the ceiling. That's not beautiful at all. <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> she's Good like down. Um, so I, I can answer that um, from a hairdressing point of view that networking and I actually believe networking in every industry is extremely important to um, to get to meet people that can help you in in developing your career or certainly guide you in the way that you would like to go um, so don't be hesitant about reaching out to a name that seems unapproachable to you. Because interestingly enough, if you look on Instagram and things and you see people have got 300,000 followers and you think, oh, I can't reach out to them. Hell, you can. And the chances are that you will probably get a response. And we will interact. And I don't have 300,000 followers, but I need them. So if you could, and all your friends <laughs> you start following me, then makes me look better. Um, but it, it is extremely important that you try to tap into people that are doing what you want to do. So from a film aspect, darling, what, what would you say? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say the... Um... The nature of the business is um, there are very few auteurs. Uh, there are a lot of people who do, do you know, do a lot and are multi-skilled, but um, understanding um, the genre or the type of type of work you want to do, and being able to focus on that and networking is 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 really important. And for me, it's I, I don't particularly enjoy it because um, contrary to popular belief, I'm actually quite shy. And you know, getting out there and um, you know, walking the walk and talking the talk and schmoozing does not come naturally uh, at all. Um, but it's so vital, you know. And I, I've 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 met a lot of hugely talented filmmakers and actors, for example, who find that also very difficult and they don't succeed. And by the same token, you know, some people not so talented, but because they can do it, you know, they're, they're going places. Um, it, it's, it's a conscious effort, Grace. You, you really have to make a conscious effort to, um, to do it. And, and, you know, to add to that, thanks Andy, to add to that, it's, um, it really can fast track you. And that's why it's so vital, regardless of the career that you're in. Because the most important thing is the people that you're connected to, sometimes even more than what you know, because mm -hmm. they can just drop your name in. And because your name is being brought up by somebody that has a following or, or works for a company or whatever, they can get doors open for you way faster than possibly you could by yourself. Great question. It is a great question. And on that note, having said all that I've just said, I got my very first paid job by, I was cartooning, I'm a cartoonist, and I was cartooning in an area of central London called Covent Garden, a little bit like Times Square, if you know. And it was a Sunday afternoon and I was, I cartooned this guy and his family, and unbeknown to me, long story short, I didn't know that he was based in Hong Kong. He was a film produ uh, production guy. He had a project. And within about seven hours, I was on a plane going to Hong Kong with him. And I stayed there for <laughs> nine months making a film with Buzz Aldrin. And Buzz Aldrin is, he wouldn't like to be known it, but he's the second man who walked on the moon. See, yeah, see. What, a, what a story, Grace. Amazing. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I mean, you just, and this is it, you just either sometimes are in a situation where you never know who you're talking to or who they know or who they're related to. But unless you get yourself out there and, and work it, you know, it's, um, you just never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is your goal, Grace? Um, I'm not sure. I definitely am excited to work. All of us, all three of us are pretty close to graduating. I'm definitely excited to get out there and finally get to start my career and everything. And eventually, I think I want to open my own salon. But as of right now, that's about it. <laughs> well, that's very cool. And if I may give you, um, a little guidance on that before you open your own salon make sure you work in a few salons 
to see what is it that's going to be important for you in your salon. Is it going to be that there's education that's ongoing all the time? Is it because you're going to do the coolest haircuts in town or the coolest colors? Or you, you, what's your speciality and what is your brand going to look like? And that sometimes I think is something that not just when you're opening a salon or a, or a business, but also on your Instagram, on your Facebook, already be developing what your brand is, who you are, what people's expectations can be of you and the team that you will one day have. And what does that look like? So you're already trying, you know, working out, okay, I'm going to be Coca-Cola in five years time. Yeah, I think that that's really a good um, uh, advice, Chris. These three artists are fortunate to be at the academy that they are, which um, I mean that by the fact that it's not like it used to be, you know, it's not like you got out of school and worked your butt off to get to be somewhere. You know, they've got salons already in the Milwaukee area that will only hire from the school that they go to. So, wow. so it's, it's a, it's, and then getting to meet you, I mean, would you allow them to put on their resume that they actually were able to be inspired by talking to you? No, I think it's better that you say we're best friends. <gasps> <laughs> oh, okay, I'm taking notes. I'm taking yeah, notes. Absolutely, <laughs> Julian. No, again, um, yeah, a good point, Joseph. Use your connections, drop names. You know, okay, if there's celebrity film stars, whatever, maybe, you know, that's kind of cool to some people. But I think if you can associate yourself and make sure I follow you, hound me until I do. Um, make sure you associate yourselves with the people that you want to hang out with and don't let anyone say what you know what are you thinking they won't talk to you don't believe believe in yourselves it's so hard it's so hard but just do it That's I'm, advice. can i kind of share and tack into what uh, chris is saying that uh, if you love education uh do as much as you can extra and if you can become an educator because that's how i got to meet chris and i've done the things that i've done in my 34 years was meet working with assisting chris in the model room you know just you get to it's mind-blowing what you will learn when that time comes again to be able to do that when we're through this new normal um it, the more that you can take in, the better. And what Chris said too, reach out to people on Instagram when you follow them, DM them. Yep. Send a message to them. Don't be afraid. And also, yeah. if I can be bold enough just to, to add to that, um, I, I kind of truly believe that there is nothing truly original. There is originality, but nothing is ever truly original. So the best filmmakers are the best thieves. And they will steal, 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 and they and and they will remold an idea and put a mark on it themselves. And it's so important because you know I teach I teach students film, and they're so they're so keen to go into a you know a, a, a room and bang their head against a brick wall trying to come up with an original idea. If they only watch the movie and said, hey, I love that camera shot or that tracking shot or that angle, I'll just I'll just steal it. Yeah, and I'll make it my own. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, I think the same is with most creative industries. Yeah, and the same, the same goes for hair. You know, there are very few innovators um, in probably the last 40, 50 years than there were prior to that. So another great thing is to know your history. And this is one of the reasons that we actually created the library that we're developing looking of iconics so that people like yourselves could learn who created what what inspired them to do it when did they do it you were never even born at that time but it's really important that you you know where things originated from and then how they evolved to how we see them today
because for example ombre i did about 30 years ago but that's not what it looks like today which is a great thing and a huge compliment so it's um yeah know your history where it came from and then how can you push it put your stamp on it make your mark on it or be inspired to then create something for yourselves that makes you stand out from the crowd just don't go too crazy always keep taste in the picture you know it's because it, some things can be fabulous unicorns and i love you know i mean put every color of the rainbow on something on a head for me and i'll love it it depends though how it's put on so you can't just throw something on anywhere and expect it to land in the right place yeah well i think that um i want to thank the three of you for taking the time to come on and talk with us on iconics and also share your questions with chris and andy I believe the three of you now have been blessed and I would uh, appreciate it. And I'm sure all of us would because with the power that the three of you have, you can help us grow our iconics on YouTube stronger than what we could ever shake a stick at. Right? I think so. Yeah. You can yeah. teach us a lot of things, a lot yes. of things. So yeah, let's get to be friends. Yeah, and if you guys want to, yeah, go ahead and take a picture. Go ahead and take a picture. Yeah, we need some proof that you're Andy's best friends, okay? Yeah. Oh, I'll leave that on the frame. No, no. <laughs> Be in the screen. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And you know what? We can't wait to come out to Appleton to hopefully come and see you guys before you graduate which um, would be would be wonderful. What, when exactly do you graduate? That's soon. Mm. I think it's in October, right? Aren't you? Um, October's a problem with the UK at the moment because of the COVID thing. Anyway, we'll, we'll do we this. will be with you in spirit. Yep, and maybe Chris, if we can get, if the three of you can get all the students and educators to sign something that says that you would love a 30 minute Zoom with her privately in the classrooms, maybe she would do that. How would you like that? Maybe she would. See? <laughs> so see what you can do bet, yeah and that, you know that's a great point joseph would any of the three of you have thought to say hey chris will you do this gig for us <laughs> maybe maybe not but that's what makes things happen because yeah. if you don't ask you don't get because we, we're not mind readers we don't know that you want that mm -hmm. cool lovely meeting okay. you guys and thank you so thanks much thanks for coming you guys peace All right, so I think that was wonderful, wasn't it? That was so nice. You two have like, I can't, like your hearts together won't fit into a 10,000 square foot space. <laughs> oh. Thanks for having me. Oh my well, goodness. Andy, you know, when you said that, Joseph, I was like, hell yes. Because I'm sure you're going to ask some interesting questions that, about Andy's interest in hair and things now. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, go ahead. Real quick. So you've been obviously to quite a few events with Chris, right? When she's been on stage. Um, what have you observed about our industry? Yeah, it's a good question, Cassie. And... Um, what I've observed a number of things. Uh, the, the pure artistry of magnificent creations, mm. uh, the sheer passion and camaraderie um, mm. within the industry. And strangely enough, uh, and it might have been my ignorance, but the, uh, the complete lack of pretension within the inner core of the industry. Mm. That's great. And it's so true and well said. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good. I agree. I, I, I saw you work in that booth, young man. I saw you over at Sorby's head shop. <laughs>
headshot. I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and I'm and as the story goes, you know, there I am with Trim Hunger, which Iconic supports highly. And there was Andy thinking, Chris has always got these attractive Zara slash All Saints <laughs> slash PQ models working her shift. <laughs> shift. I said shift, not shit. Cause you're, you know, your stuff is not shit, but yeah. However, I was pretty that word at selling mannequin heads and symposium. <laughs> yeah. I sold not a one. <laughs> <laughs> So he got fired. <laughs> you were, yeah, you were manning her heads. Yeah. Um, I want to ask a question to Andy because I, you've received awards for your work, uh, for how you're written up on the internet, and I'd like to know what would be your, what would you say was your greatest accomplishment of the awards that you received in your film or your photography. What was it? Do you know? Well, I thank you, Joseph. I, ha I have won a few little gongs, but not nearly as um, eminent as the uh, as the great Miss Sorby. Yeah. So I think I I, I, no, I, I I made a conscious decision about five six years ago. Life's too short, and I can't do another cat food commercial for Azerbaijan. <laughs> um, I just thought I need to make documentaries and films that uh, are really important to me. And so I have done that. And uh, with that comes, uh, you know, it's difficult. It's very tough. You've got to be all things to all men. You've got to know everything about, about as much as you can. Um, but the, 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 I think the last, the last film I did about the assisted dying and the, and the right to die laws around the world um, was particularly pertinent and particularly sensitive uh, and continues to be that. And it's not, it, it's not, it's not a sexy topic for film festivals. It's not, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a topic that people want. And um, just to go to the Queen's World Film Festival, for example, and to, you know, to have an audience watch it and pick up an award there um, for, for, for the enormous amount of effort that, um, you know, a two man team, you know, do and make over two years, that was nice. And it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a subject close to my heart. Love that. You know, I really admire Andy for what he does, not just from a creative standpoint, and he won't say this, but he's been into war zones. He's seen some horrific, horrific things. Our house has many um, little mementos that if you looked at them, they wouldn't mean anything. And you would think, why has Andy got that in the house? You know, and these were actually things that he'd been given, was it in Croatia mm. that you were? Yeah. During the war in Croatia of people who, um, mm. Andy had interviewed for a film that he did, a documentary for, that he did for that. And they gave him these things that, you know, they're, they're meaningless, they're, they're of no value, but they were everything to that person that gave them because they knew Andy was telling their story. And it's things like that, that I so admire him and completely, I'm, I'm Andy's assistant now for whatever I can do. If I have to hold a tripod, I'm used to tripods, so that's an easy one. Um, but, you know, I would do anything to, to help him and learn about film and learn about the world and, and about people that are in situations that you normally wouldn't come across. So. And, you, and you have such a background, seriously, because the little background that I have in, in the film on, on stage, you worked with cameras and lighting and you had rehearsals and practices that you had to, you know, to learn. So it's, it's, you know, you have your artisans, right, that you know what it is you're doing on your model, but then you have to be so aware of where you're standing and you know your eloquence is that the right word eloquent mm -hmm. um the eloquence that you have in passing conversation back and forth i ah. recognize because that's oh. how as a small redkin baby i was introduced the proper way <laughs> of stage presence when you're up there with someone you know and and how you wait for them and how you say great question and then you come over here you know 
this is all such an important documentary right now because I see it as so many different, like we bought a cheesecake last week and it was cut into four quadrants and each quadrant was a different flavor. And that's how I see this because we're getting all the information on the film side, all the information on the hair side, and then you graciously present, I mean, did you see the excitement in those students, Chris? Please don't say you're, yeah, don't say you're done because- Oh, never, no, I would love to do that. Oh, you know, well, we, could, we could film a, a little video for them. A congratulations course. on their graduation. And, oh, my God. And, and, you know, if you give me their names, <laughs> Joseph, yeah. if you give me their names, then, you know, I can name them. So they get recognized very early in their careers. And, and that, I think, to get recognition is it's not something you can buy. You cannot pay for it. But to have to hear your name being said from either a platform or, or on a video or yeah, whoever, um, it will mean so much. Oh my gosh, I can so, feel healing for them. Yeah, <laughs> so just make sure, sorry, my phone is- I will, on. I will, I'll get you that. I'll get you that information and you could yeah. always send me a little clip to my phone and I can get it to them or, or whatever. Fabulous. I think that yeah. that's just a wonderful, that's a wonderful thing. Again, heart gets bigger. We're up to 11,000 square foot room now. <laughs> <laughs> it's Julia, it is, you know being what? beautiful. I know your head is full of wanting to ask and I'm gonna step <laughs> back and give you that opportunity. Thank you. Well, you know what? Actually, I wanted to share something with you guys as well with everything that you're saying and how having someone that has been recognized with experience and all of that confidence say your name or help your work with you is so valuable totally i mean you remember joseph when you first came joseph came to peru it was the first artist i ever brought international artist and i think that he didn't understand the value you know he didn't he didn't understand the value he didn't see how people were going to embrace him and just and you remember Joseph I mean I felt like an old Justin Bieber <laughs> people <laughs> to pick him up at the airport with signs and everything you know yeah, and, yeah. and 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 Joseph said to me do these people not go to the bathroom do they not smoke do they not use their cell phone and he said I feel like I'm in a different planet because people were just he would say to them, do you want to take a break? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and really, it was Joseph that needed the break. <laughs> yeah, Joseph needed the break. So, I mean, I just think that it's so important, mm -hmm. you know, the whole icon concept and everything of really bringing near these people that for so many of us are unreachable, you know, and just bringing that feeling in wow, she cares enough about me, he cares enough about me to come closer to say my name. It's extremely valuable. Yeah, it so is. thank you so much. And thank you again, Joseph. Yeah, it thank is. Thank you. And, and you know, Julia, that, that's a great point, but it's, it's testimony to Joseph and Chris, and of course, you and Cassie, that we've had, you know, 23, you know, really amazing interviewees and participants over the last few months. Yeah, yeah. Really it's, um, it really is. I was explaining to somebody just the other day about Iconics and what it is. I, and now off the top of my head, I don't remember who it, who it was. Um, but I was explaining to them the value that this library is going to have oh. for people who are young. Oh, I think it was to a hairdresser that I was telling. Yeah, I'm sure it was to a very young hairdresser. And, um, and you know, I said the importance of knowing what went before you is vital because unless you know history and you are in the present, you can't see the future. And it's, it's, it's vital. Very well said. And Absolutely. Um, and I, I was just when you said that it just sparked you know even though this is trying times that we're going through with the pandemic and you know all the switches and changes but 
this is beautiful because at a hair show, you're untouchable. Mm -hmm. You're touchable right now and not in a weird way. <laughs> it would never be weird with you, Cassie, anyway. I love yeah. you cuddling me. <laughs> Andy, I remember Andy, that. Andy, where are your hands, Andy? We're not telling nothing, okay? Yeah. What's below the waist stays, stays below the, waist. the Zoom waist. And it's not even waist, it's up here. Chris, talk about here. talk a little bit about color. Let's get something out of you on the color. So you became that uh, global international um, artistic director for Redken, right? That was in what year? Uh, well, 2000. I mean, what a way to kick off a millennium. Right. So I started my role as global artistic director um, along with Ruth Roach at that time, who was, I was color, she was design. And <laughs> excuse me, you've got to watch Ruth's Iconics video to learn about that lady. She is so incredible in the way that her mind works and it working with her was such a joy um because uh, we think quite si in a similar way so we would be making hair pieces and hacking up hair pieces and sewing hair pieces it's like you cut them up and then you re-sew them in another way and things like that so although i was very much labeled as color and Ruth was as design, we collaborated on everything. And that's again, I think um, a great part of my career has been having the opportunities to collaborate with people that are now all superstars in their own right. But we were all, well, they were babies, I wasn't so much the baby, but you know, I worked with these people most of the time in London or, or in the US in my previous life before Redken. But again, to, to rub shoulders with the people that you admire, you look up to, you respect, and most importantly, you know they're gonna say to you, Chris, that is shit, start again. And I, I need that. It doesn't matter what level we're on or how amazing we think we are as a legend in our own lifetime. We're not, we're not, we can always do better, but we need people around us that are gonna push us and push us because they know we have it in us. And I think us, all of us are teachers um, and leaders. So we know when we get students, we see, we see talent and ability and capability a mile off when they don't even know that they've got the first step yet. So that's why we, we have those opportunities to be able to push those people. Like the, the three kids that you just brought on, Joseph, they're not kids, they're, they're, they're already adults because they've already realized that this is the place to be right now. Your school is the place to be. Boy, did they choose the right school. Because I'm sure yours is not the only cosmetology school in, in your area. And well, since I've absolutely, Joseph, have absolutely. <laughs> no, but I, it's you know, some kids yeah. want to leave home and travel, that's their first excuse to go to another town to do their training. Yes. But but they are blessed being with you because yeah. you. As an owner of a school, and I think this really goes without saying for all of the tea spas and the summer academies, that we're all um, connected to Redkin, so you're now tr teaching the Redkin ways. The, the kids don't understand what they're getting, but boy, we know. We know that they are set up for life, regardless what fashion comes in, what fashion goes out they will know how to do everything purely based on principle based design principle based color yeah how can you go wrong you can't no no you can't and you, but, you know, it. unless you unless you've been to another school or you've worked in a salon you don't know how fortunate you are you know that's i, I think huge yeah, that, that's well said that's good for yes them. i mean you inspire me so much you gave me the confidence to open up a beauty school here 
There you go. See, Joseph, what you did? You I'm threw so Judah in the jungle into the deep end <laughs> of the jungle. Wait a minute. Isn't this a, a Reese interview? Isn't this a Reese interview? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I um I want to tell you, Chris, and you know this as well, and I know Cassie does, and and Julia knows my story, and Andy, you just you're getting to know my story, but I was very, very, very blessed to actually have the graces of a uh, Redkin. Not that I eat, sleep, and drink it, because remember, having a wife and two daughters, our shower upstairs was a chemistry lab of product, so. I used it as a professional tool to help hair that was in bad damage become hair again. And with that being said, given the tools of design and learning what these students are learning, I, I constantly am sharing with them how lucky that they are, but you're right, they don't yet. They, they just won't yet. It, it takes about a year and a half and then I'll get emails back. Oh my God, I cannot believe it. I was watching a video and like, I remember my daughter that went to school and, and she was upset because she would sit in your classes and someone would ask a question that basically they should have known because they were in the industry for 20 years. And she was in the industry for only two and knew the answer. And it was, I mean, that's what they need to understand, which, you know, just, it's, it's crazy, but the, the, the generation of students that are being produced by, you know, the summits and the Salon Professional Academies and the ESI nows uh, are, the industry is just changing. It's so sharp. It's so good right away. It's so you don't have to train for a year because you'll bore them to freaking death and they'll leave the salon. You know, it's almost like you got to bring them in and just expect they're gonna do what they're taught and fall and scrape themselves sooner than what we used to always coddle. Mm -hmm. Very true. So, and, go ahead, Cassie. I was just gonna ask Andy a question because this really seems like the perfect time to ask. We're talking about the stylist. And what has shocked you most about hairdressers and most about your wife? Nothing. <laughs> Well, what is, what, what is, I'll get on to Chris in a moment, okay? <laughs> because you're not going to believe this in the same way that I don't believe it either. <laughs> um, no, I, I, well, I, think, I think one of Chris's, um, well, hairdressers in general, um, I, it, what, what shocks me is they have an uncanny ability. And Chris is also, uh, although Chris is very honest, but this amazing uncanny ability to be talking to someone about their hair and giving great advice and then turning around and sort of sort of saying, what was she thinking? <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I saw a lot of that. I witnessed quite a lot of that at symposium. <laughs> um, but the sheer, the sheer, the sheer passion uh, is, is amazing. But I'll tell you a story, Chris, um, she wasn't trying to impress me. Um, but we were talking about her past and mainly the past before she came to the US. And she told me about all these bands and celebrities that she'd, uh, <laughs> she'd done hair for. And, you know, I was like, wow, absolutely. And then she mentioned um, there was a 90s, there was a band in the early 1990s from the UK, from London. And they, they were called Right Said Fred. And they had a global US hit called I'm Too Sexy. I don't, know whether you, I don't know whether you remember this, okay? But it, these, was on, it was used on every hair show, of course they did. It was. Now, it, now, these, now these two guys, these, these brothers, Richard and Fred, okay, they are not only great recording artists, but physically they're built like this. And here's the important thing. They are both bald. And yet Chris claims that she did their hair. And I'm just... <laughs> I was doing, I was doing a video for, uh, I think it was Red Nose Day or something like that. So I had to fix them. You could... You know, 
you could polish their heads and 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 eat your dinner on them. There's not an. <laughs> no, one of the band had hair. One of them band did have hair, but so and the but the band was called Right Said Fred. Mm -hmm. so the, one of the band had hair and so did the boy's mum. I'm also shocked <laughs> and, and in awe, uh, actually, Cassie, as to just what you need to, you, to be. You know, as a filmmaker, you need to be multivarious, but as a hairdresser, you need to get into so many things. You have to be a creative, you have to be a business person, you have to be part psychologist, you have to be part-time gossip monger, um, and all of these things. <laughs> whilst, <laughs> while, stand, while standing up with, with your feet in front of you, carrying a pair of brushes, uh, a brush and a, a, a comb, and you know, having a perfectly natural conversation with someone, and, and maybe eight or nine of those in a day. <laughs> <laughs> He's nailed it, hasn't he? I mean, observant. Right? You know what? I need to add, I'm going to jump in and just say this, and please do not take this wrong, but is this a true story or not? The first time that the two of you became intimate and you kind of crawled in together, is it not true, Andy, that you told me that when you reached down, you felt she had a third leg, but it was truly the Naha Award that she won, <laughs> that she was sleeping with? It was certainly hard <laughs> and, 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 and very big, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, oh, the, God. the fact that I've got two, I probably had four legs. But the thing, <laughs> but the, but the, but the thing is, Joseph, the thing is, Joseph, I, I, was a, I was a little worried because I've been to the Philippines, okay? And I've been out clubbing in the Philippines, okay? And I just didn't want this to be another <laughs> of that. <laughs> And I hope oh my God! That, All right, you guys, listen up. I want you both to share. Chris, please share um, real briefly any projects or things that you may be working on in the next year or two that we'd want to know about. And Andy, why don't you share a, a possible documentary or something that you're sh you're going to be working on? maybe soon or, or something? I mean, what do you guys have in the tank? From my perspective right now, um, there are a few people that want me to train them on a one-to-one -one basis here in the UK, which is as soon as the COVID thing is over, we can nail down. Um, but to be honest with you, the, the longer that I'm involved with Iconics, the deeper I want to get into it. So I... Um, it's, it's almost like to, to be involved in the industry and yet not be touching a head yeah. of hair is incredible for me. It's so inspirational to think of who else can we get that we know that is going to give huge benefit in mm -hmm. our library. So that's what I'm on. Love and it. Andy? Uh, I have a multimedia stage play, which I'm writing at the moment with, um, with, with a friend of mine. Uh, Chris and I have a uh, documentary. Um, we're hoping to get down to Peru and also see Julia when we do. Mm. But that's all about um, the Amazonian indigenous communities and their uh, plant-based medicine, ayahuasca, which is very interesting. Wow. Uh, and, and a few other projects uh, bubbling. It, 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 it all takes time. And uh, obviously, I'm going to try and um, make sure I get up to speed with my Iconics soundbite editing. <laughs> nice. This would be a good one. You know, I, let me ask you a question, Chris. Um, so next week, we have someone coming on Iconics from my neck of the woods, and I've had the honor to work with him. Um, Charlie Price, can you share a few words? Um, oh, oh, oh. Why? How much time do we have right? to exactly. share a few words about Charlie Price? Charlie is priceless. I mean, talk about a man being given the most perfect last name that depicts who he is, is I, I, I've never known anything like it. Charlie's an interesting personality from a, his personality standpoint. He's one of the most creative and inspiring hairdressers that I've ever worked with. He has the ability to pull a team together to create this underground movement that um, where he's got hair, the 
cream of the cream involved yeah. with him. And I think they paid to work with him. I'm not sure what the deal is there, but they don't get, is that correct, Cassie? Yes, they do. But you got to come and join this guy because he is, um, he's young to be an icon, but he's definitely an icon. Yeah. And he has a priceless personality. You will enjoy. I but he doesn't hold anything back. So. Oh, well. <laughs> You know what? I want to say thank you, Chris and Andy. This was great. Um, I can't say enough. It was it was wonderful, and I'm I'm touched by what, how you touched those young artists' hearts. And Cassie, thanks, and Julia, thank you. Keep watering whatever's behind you because you're doing a great <laughs> job. <laughs> Ayahuasca, she's growing that. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we will look forward to the next documentary, which will be Charlie Price. So for those of you that watch this one, go ahead and share this. Subscribe on YouTube. Share this with friends. And certainly, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone. We'll see you. Peace out.